So we're going to talk here about uh, introducing the periodic table. Um, the periodic table is uh, a list of all the elements. So everything in the universe is made up of uh, these, these 100 or so elements. I've got a periodic table here. So uh, everything in the universe is made up of, uh, of, of these 100 or so different elements. Uh, and the, what we have them, uh, we have them here in the periodic table arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So the atomic number is the bottom number, it's the number of protons present in the nucleus, uh, and it's down here, so hydrogen has one proton. The periodic table reads like a book. Uh, so we read the book left to right, so if we go right from here, we get to element number two, helium. And then we get to the end of the row, so we go to the next row on the left-hand side, so we read it like a book. So that's lithium over here, then beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. We get to the end of this row, we call the rows periods. And we go to the uh, next period down on the left-hand side, and it reads across like this. And this is how we know every element in the periodic table up until the bottom uh, one down here has been discovered. Uh, because there is, there is no gaps in these atomic numbers. There's no spaces uh, where we go from, say, 8 to 10. It goes up one each time, so every element in this periodic table has been discovered. Now, the periodic table has a number of trends and patterns and actually if we really understand it and really use it well it can help us immensely from predicting the properties of, a, of another element to um, working out the formula of a compound uh, whether something is a metal or a non-metal there's so much in the periodic table and we really it really helps if we understand it uh, properly well so I've got an introduction on this page of the book, so let's quickly talk through this. Uh, draw a line on the outline of the periodic table below and state where the metal and non-metal divide is. Again, that's quite easy to remember. The metals live on the left and the non-metals live on the right, and the dividing line starts here. Okay? So that's what we have to remember. We have to remember there, at the start of this block here, right next to group three. And it, that, once we remember that, all we need to remember is it steps down like so. Okay, so this is the dividing line between metals and non-metals. Okay, the metals are this side, the non-metals are this side. Once we've done that, just extend it over here so it goes beneath hydrogen as well, because hydrogen here, this is a non-metal. So the non-metals are on this side, uh, and the metals are on this side. And you can see from that quite clearly that about three quarters of the elements on the periodic table uh, are indeed metallic, uh, and the non-metals are in the minority. Also on the outline, can you clearly label the group numbers and the period numbers? Now remember, groups go down. Okay, uh, so this is group. Uh, this is group one here. So this is going to be group one. Okay, and this is going to be group two down here. Okay, this big group in the middle here called the transition metals. So it doesn't have. It does not have a number. And I know that's not what the question asks, but I'm going to label it anyway. Uh, these are the transition metals here. Uh, they're transition, they're, they're the elements between, in transition if you like, between group two and group three. Group three is all the way over here. I've written metal over where I should write three. Let's squeeze three in there. This is group four. All these down here. This is group five. No, no surprise, that's six and that's seven. Uh, sometimes people think this is group eight. No, afraid not. It would be nice if it was. It's group zero. Okay, I call it group zero because the elements in this group react with absolutely nothing. That's quite a nice way of remembering it, I think. Right, so they're the, they're the group numbers. Period numbers go across. Okay, so uh, this, this one was period one here. A lot of people forget period one. One of my favourite questions is to ask students to name me an element in period three. Uh, and students will often pick an element from this row here. Okay, that's not right, that's period four, because they've forgotten period one. So period one is this one here. So let's go period one. Period one goes that way. Hydrogen, helium. Period two, uh, row two down here, starts there, lithium and goes through to uh, neon. Period three, that way. Period four, five, uh, six, etc. Okay, so groups go down, periods go across. That's what we have to remember. So, uh, are groups horizontal or vertical? Groups go down, vertical. Are periods horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Do elements in the same groups or the same periods have similar properties? Okay, the answer is groups. Okay, everything group zero reacts with absolutely nothing. These group here, the halogen group, group seven, these are reactive non-metals. Uh, group one here, these are reactive metals. So elements in the same groups have similar properties. Elements in the same periods have nothing in common at all. For example, reactive metal. Okay, uh, reactive non-metal, totally unreactive. Elements in the same periods have nothing in common. 
elements in the same groups have lots of similar properties and Dmitry Mendeleev spotted that a couple hundred years ago.